The T, I think, is different. The T is different for a number of reasons, but one of them is this. The T is encroaching on childhood in ways that the L, the G, and the B typically haven't done. Think about it. A girl could claim to be a lesbian at nine, and at 15, she decides she was wrong. She may have made some harmful choices in the interim. She may have some painful memories and relationships to think of, but no permanent damage has been done. If a girl at nine decides she's a boy trapped in a girl's body and undergoes surgery and undergoes hormone therapy, then her body has been permanently changed. She has cut off the option of ever having children, for example, in her uh, uh, mature adult life. And I think, one, that's a tragedy. Two, I think it's going to lead to lawsuits. I think we're already seeing people transitioning back from having transitioned. In future years, when you get kids whose transition was enabled when they were nine or 10, and their bodies were permanently damaged, they're gonna sue. The question, of course, of what can we do to prevent this damage in our churches is a pressing one. And I think there are some obvious things. Uh, teach the whole counsel of God. I don't think the church should get so preoccupied with the, the things that pop up in our culture that all we're doing is playing whack-a-mole with cultural issues all the time. If you teach by precept and example, the biblical view of marriage, you don't have to be refuting all of the false alternatives all the time. If your kids grow up knowing what true biblical marriage is, they will spot the counterfeits when they cross their path. We don't have to worry too much about trying to second guess the culture in terms of what madness it's going to indulge in next. Teach the whole counsel of God, give our kids a good framework for addressing whatever the culture throws at them. Secondly, I think we need to think about worship. So much of what we're wrestling with today regarding LGBTQ kind of stuff has not come about as a result of arguments. Our kids are not falling for this stuff because they've read great tomes of gender theory and been persuaded by them. Their imaginations have been gripped by soap operas, by sitcoms, by stories they've read, by TikTok videos they've seen, by YouTube videos they've seen, by testimonies they've heard. Their imaginations have been gripped. Well. The church needs to grip the imagination of its people as well. We do that partly through great fine preaching. We do it partly through the, the signs and symbols of the faith, baptism and the Lord's Supper. We also do it through worship, worship that speaks to our souls, that grips the imagination. So we need to think about worship as a way of doing that. Thirdly, we need to take our own teaching seriously, and that can be hard. We need to engage in church discipline when people fall outside of the lines. One of the worst mistakes the church ever made was not taking no-fault divorce seriously. That sent the signal that we didn't take marriage seriously. We need to start taking our own teaching seriously and making the painful decisions that that may well bring in its wake in certain circumstances. And then I think parents. Parents need to be aware of a number of things. One, they should not assume that the church can carry the spiritual burden for them. They need to be teaching their kids. Secondly, parents need to be aware that it doesn't matter if they send their kids to Christian school or home schools. Teachers are not the most influential people in young people's lives anymore. It's TikTok videos, it's YouTube, it's things like that. And I would say that means do not give your kids a smartphone and do not allow them screen time in private. If you give your kid a smartphone, you're essentially handing the education of your kids over to the most extreme and crazy voices on TikTok and YouTube that you could possibly imagine. So I think parents too need to take real responsibility. <laughs>